So what we're seeing are the ember generators exposing the structure. Now, what we have is wind blowing inside the lab as well as generating the embers. And this is a very, very realistic demonstration. So we see uh, vinyl gutters that have ignited. They're full of pine needles and they have melted and fallen off. On the right, it's the, uh, um, by, uh, the metal gutters. Here in this re-entrant corner, we've got bark mulch on the surface, pine needles in the roof valley, and the vinyl gutters melted and fell down onto that bark mulch. And this was the result of the entrant corner. We ended up with sustained ignition and had we not suppressed it, it would have taken down the house. So also notice for the moment, all the places that ignited at the house, putting flame on the house, there is no flame zone exposing this house from a wildfire. This, this was initiated totally by the ember shower. This is just a couple of examples of, of, of what is a better approach to uh, making your home uh, more resistant to wildland fire, particularly from the embers. You know, we talk, we, we're not talking about vegetation management and defensible space per se, but we are going to talk a little bit about what happens right next to your home. And this is called uh, the near home zone in California, it's be becoming uh, it's, be, it's being called the ember resistant zone, the zero zone. There's a lot of names for it, but the point is you're minimizing the amount of things that can burn that are really close to your home. And you have to acknowledge that this near home zone includes under the footprint of any attached deck. And so uh, these pictures are from Colorado Springs um, af after the, uh, the 2012 Waldo Canyon fire. These are good examples. I think the point is you really can't expect to have your own personal lumber yard under your deck as we see in, in, the, in the lower uh, right hand picture and expect any deck to survive that. And the thing about igniting decks or burning decks is that they typically ignite your home because fire moves from the deck to the home uh, through sliding glass door, uh, through siding, through some sort of access uh, to, to the deck from the home. Uh, this, this whole concept is uh, referred to as house out. So you worry about your house and stuff really close to your house and you move out from there to your property line. So this is what we learned from our research. And the other thing is that embers will accumulate in the between deck board gaps. And that is where the ignitions are gonna occur. So you wanna make sure that you keep uh, debris out of, out of those gaps. And you'll notice where that yellow uh, circle is on the right-hand picture, that's in a gap above a joist. And if, if the joist isn't there, then the embers just fall to the ground. It's another argument for having uh, minimal combustibles underneath the deck because even if you've walled off your front of the deck, embers are gonna come through the deck board gaps and land on whatever's on the ground area via that. So this is just setting the stage as to uh, where ignitions occur and, 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 and where embers accumulate. Is it possible to create a fire adaptive community? Yeah. Oh, heck yes. Well, I mean, so, so what we have, a fire adapted community or ignition resistant community is what you get when you have collectively ignition resistant houses. And if it's of higher density than such that you've got home ignition zones overlapping, then you've got ignition resistant home ignition zones house after house, and, and what that does is it indeed not only makes an ignition resistant community so that it can be protected, but it also, well, let me put it this way. 
the house and the community that doesn't burn is the safest. Now, of course, that judgment, we're not there right You know, tomorrow. But the bottom line is ignition resistance, houses and communities enhance not only the ability to protect the property, it enhances life safety big time. A few takeaways that we want to uh, bring home. One, of course, is just to, to, to make sure you remember how important ember, embers are in terms of, of igniting homes or not igniting homes to the, to the extent that, that your home is able to resist them. So we really encourage you to walk around your house and based on what we've, what we've said today, and um, if you go to firesafemarin.org, um, there's a lot of information there about, about um, vulnerabilities of homes and things that you can do. And so walk around your home, take note of the locations where it's vulnerable and and um, if you're not quite sure what to do, you know, um, take a look at the website, um, give us an email if you're not quite clear. Remember to uh, uh, this, we talked about this coupled approach where your home survives because of what you do in your home ignition zone and what you do to your home. So this house out approach. And, um, and then j just don't be, uh, you know, depressed or anything, because there's many things you can do uh, that are relatively inexpensive, cleaning your debris out of your gutter, debris off your roof, clearing things away from your house. Um, you know, these things are not expensive and, and we know they're very effective. If you live in a neighborhood, I think it's really important to engage uh, your neighbors in like efforts. I mean, Marin County has a lot of firewise communities. I think it's brought a lot of communities together. This is a good thing. And um, I think we just need to keep up, keep up the good work.